think to work with police when there has been a crime that occurred, and I believe that Lehigh County would be suited, would be best served not 14 36. Thank you. Thank you. Would anybody else like to address the board on non agenda item? Yes, uh, I heard the Rabble Rogers might be here tonight, but I guess they're not, um, which is good news because, frankly, um, not understanding the issue and the facts surrounding the issue is pretty irresponsible. The guy county is not a sanctuary county. Um, I don't think it should become one, but currently we're not. We meet the uh, constitutional requirements. Uh, the Attorney General, the DOJ, uh, uh, ICE itself, they changed the definition two months into the new administration for a reason. They realized that it is a constitutional problem. You cannot detain people with a phone call. You need a judicial or order or a warrant. Um, this comes from Justin Hansen and Scalia's uh, Brady Bill case, where he wrote basically, and again, he's no bleeding hard liberal, great jurist in my opinion, but he wrote, if you allow the federal government to commandeer local law enforcement agencies, the power of the federal government will basically become infinite. So it's just a stupid policy. So um, yeah, do not rescind it. Um, I don't think any commissioner is interested in rescinding it. Um, it's just a stupid issue that keeps coming back. In fact, I dusted off my draft of the report because every time I think it's dead, so knuckleheads pursue the issue again, frankly, more for politics. Um, it's being driven by a repeatedly failed politician who wraps his cloak around this issue in the hopes of reviving his hopefully long dead political career. Um, so I'll dust it off. And the easy solution is called a 1373 compliance letter. Uh, again, Attorney General Sessions made the decision to redefine the definition of a sanctuary which is if you cooperate with ICE and sharing information, you are not a sanctuary city. The city of Miami changed their policies a little bit. They don't detain people without a warrant, and they, were, they changed their policies to share information with ICE. They were declared a non-sanctuary city, and their grants are not in danger of being pulled. I think Lehigh County should just submit a formal document or the district attorney possibly, or in conjunction, and get a certification that you're 1373 compliant. I'll talk more about this or send you uh, the board information. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Commissioner, good evening. Sam Borzik from Whitehall. Um, just want to talk about a couple of things. I'll try to make it short as I can. But I want to talk about, I'm no longer working for the county. Um, it's been almost three months. Okay, but I'm not here for or anything else, but I want to talk about Cedar Brook. Um, in the last month and a half, two months, um, I've been getting a lot of texts and email and all that regarding all my friends and employees at Cedar Brook regarding room union issue. Um, you have, since the court has been, the federal court has been telling people you don't have to be a union, you can't be a full member, all the other stuff. If you're not a full member, you don't have to be in. The fair share employees at Cedar Brook, they're not paying no more union dues, okay? They're out of it, which is fine. But they're constantly, constantly getting harassed, okay? And by either the union official, okay? Um, and nobody's here as a Democrat, as a me, or as a union, as a me. I've been a union for 25 years. But when I find out and I see a union going out of this, out of, the, out of their line and harassing people and setting people up and accusing people, that's a dirty union. That's not the union I was born and raised and brought up that way, okay? And when you have a union representative, don't need to come to the building without authorization, that person still come to the building and tell other people to go out and intimidate people and make them join the union. Look, here's the deal. I'm a fair person. The state law, the government said I don't have to be in the union. I tell people come down and speak. They're afraid to speak, okay? They know Sam's gonna come down and speak. Let the people speak, okay? But when a union of purposely, okay, set three, four, five people up to go set somebody up, that's a dirty, okay? That's not the steel work I came from. That's not the iron work I came from. 
That's not, that's not what the union is, okay? And, and the final thing is, I called, her, I, I called Washington today. I'm trying to find out how you go about this. They, they gave me 717 to call Harrisburg. I called Harrisburg, okay? HR department should have a paper. Just like when you go in, you want to change the bank or change whatever you want to do. You want to be in the union. The people who are in the full union, they get intimidated. Don't want to be in the union, okay? If I don't want to be in the union, all I have to do is go down to HR and tell them, listen, I don't want to be in the union, okay? Okay, here's the paper, sign the paper, send it to the, send it to the International Union. The International Union don't have to be in the union. So for the last month and a half, okay, the administrator, the administrator, nobody knows what goes on because nobody wants to speak their frank, okay? Um, or administrator or whatever, nobody knows what goes on. But there's constantly, 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 you know what I mean, people going harassing, okay? Harassing people. And I think that should stop because if, if the, the people are full member, let them stay full member. And the people, they're not a full member, they're out of it now. Why are you going for, that person's been non-union for 10 years. Why are you asking him now to be in union? He doesn't want to be in the union. And there's a lot of issues. There's a lot of issues goes on, okay? And I'm sorry, and look, like I said to you, I'm, I'm, my blood is a union, but that's not the way it is the union run. And you guys know me. You know, Mr. Doctor, you know me. I stood up here, fought, 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 fought for you. But that's not the way the union run, you know? I, I, some of the commissioners, I help door to door. I don't mind doing that. But when a union, out of the blue, we start, today, I got a phone call today, okay? I'm not gonna relieve names. You know what? The union rep telling somebody, you need to go on the floor and the people in my union ask to be a full union. Why? And that's, that's wrong. That, that is wrong. Because if everybody think you know, after this law's changed, you know, everybody think, and then with HR department, that's, that's another issue, okay, that's another issue. But I truly believe, okay, somebody truly should look into it, okay, and, and it's not fair for the union, it's not fair just because you got, and I don't even want to get into it, just because you got three, four, five people come down, to, come down here and accuse somebody and lie about somebody and set somebody up, that's wrong. When you have a petition, you have, look, I've been there, I've done it. When you have a petition going around and sign to get rid of somebody, set somebody up, that's a dirty union. That is dirty union. I stood up here, fought for Cedarbrook, and fought for Good Shepherd, because I know the five-star Good Shepherd where it came from, but let me tell you something. I don't come up here and, 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 and talk like this unless something's bothering me, but it's wrong because it's wrong. When you have 900 employees and you only have 35 people set somebody up, that's dirty business, okay? That's dirty business. And some of you, you all know what I'm talking about, and I don't even get into detail with that, okay? Thank you, have a good day. Thank you. Phil Armstrong, County Executive. I'm here for completely something different, uh, just to brag to the commissioners our county solicitor, who is just several months on the job. No. Not you, <laughs> no. Sarah, Sarah Jolly was just named lawyer on the fast track for 2018. So I think we have picked, besides also being selected as the president of the Lehigh Valley Bar Association, she has just gotten this honor, and I wanted to share it with the entire board. We have some great people working here. Thank you. One last call for citizens' input. All right. Um, I won't be too long. My name is Lou Shu. Uh, I live here in Allentown. I emailed uh, the commissioners earlier today about what I discovered earlier today was possibly a very big mistake. Um, I don't know all the details. Even now, I was just informed that the machines, the contract that you entered into with ES&S was the only one that was certified by the Federal Election Commission. 
uh, I could have sworn that all of the vendors that had shown up to the um, expo uh, put on by the Department of uh, State uh, were certified. Um, I was there that day to, uh, to examine the machines and with one exception, I didn't like any of them. Uh, they're using proprietary software, they're using proprietary <coughs> machines, and I don't see a whole lot as far as paper backup goes. Um, for those who don't know, I was involved in the uh, recount of 2016 here in Lehigh County, uh, and that's all been posted to realchange.us where uh, I allayed my suspicions at the time because the machines that were purchased long ago are grossly inadequate. There's no paper backup. There's no way to determine, uh, to, to, do, to do a proper recount. Now, granted, I was asleep at the wheel. Uh, my focus had been elsewhere. But I promise I will be paying more attention to this in the near future. And in fact, I will return with a far more definitive explanation during the uh, next commission meeting. But, long story short, please reconsider your decision with ESS. It's a terrible company. They shouldn't even be in this business. And we need to get back to paper-based ballots. Thank you. Thank you, Lou. Hello, I'm Naomi Wench. I live in Hansboro. Um, I came here to um, thank you guys for having uh, the resolution from 2014-36. It is a brilliant uh, piece that is so easy that we don't we don't we don't go against the Constitution and we don't cause ourselves to get um, fined and sued for hundreds of thousands of dollars. It seems like a no-brainer, and I thank you for being so reasonable for having this. And I plead with you to not rescind this um, by any any petition uh, so forth that may have come to you or will continue to come to you. Um, and I only ask that you consider going a little bit deeper. Uh, there are ways to protect our residents, whether they be documented or not. Uh, Larry Krasner down at, at the DA in Philadelphia has done some really great work protecting um, undocumented people that are being targeted for um, uh, physical and uh, sexual abuse and sex trafficking. Kids are not showing up to school because they are being targeted. We can set policies here in Lehigh County that can take it a little bit further and take it a little bit safer to say we're not we're not going to call ICE when someone's here to testify or um, against a, a, an abusive person or something has happened. So I only encourage you to go further with this um, and protecting people from being harmed. And please don't miss in 2014-36. Thank you. Thank you, Naomi. Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, Ed Hosa, the Director of Administration. Um, sir, the, co the county did not enter into any contract with any voting machine vendor yet. Uh, if everyone would like, there will be three days with uh, vendors demonstrating the, their machines here in this room, September 11th, Tuesday, September 11th, from 9 to 12, ESNS company, uh, in the afternoon, 1 p.m. to 4 p.m., company called Clear Ballot. Uh, Wednesday, 9 to 12, uh, Unison, also in the afternoon, 1 to 4, Unison. Then Thursday, September 13th, uh, 9 to 12, Dominion. And Thursday afternoon, 1 to 4, The Heart Company. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Fred Sorek, uh, the last meeting I addressed some concern about the homelessness of children. I did get some assistance in that area, so I appreciate the opportunity to present uh, this, and I contacted the Allentown School District, and uh, I guess the Mr. Valenti, they call him Brewster. Okay. Anyways, I have a meeting set up with him and hopefully get the problem somewhat resolved. Thank you, Fred. I'm glad we could assist. Thank you. One last call for citizens' input. All right, moving along. We have nothing under chair's review. 
There are no appointments for consideration tonight. So we're going to move right into old business. Uh, we'll bring us to Bill 2018-20. Uh, Mr. Clerk, would you introduce tonight's first bill, please? Commissioner Bill 2018-20, authorizing a grant to the Pennsylvania Music Preservation Society for the growth of Lehigh County's economic base, sponsored by Commissioners Brace and Zanelli. Thank you, Madam Solicitor. The purpose of this ordinance is to authorize a grant to the Pennsylvania Music Authorization Society. The amount of the grant is $2,000, and ordinance approval is required for grants that are made outside of the budget policy. Thank you. Sponsor comments? Commissioners Bracers and Nelly, would you like to add anything? Uh, we've been chewing on this for the better part of two months now, so I don't know that we have, I don't have anything else to add. No, we've been doing the better at the end of this point, I believe so. Any other commissioner comments? Any public input on the bill? Oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Holt. <coughs> Good evening, Joe Logan, South Allentown. Um, been hearing some talk about this, so I don't know what's true and what's not, so we'll sort that out hopefully quickly. Um, reading this, it sounds like we're tapping into the reserve fund, correct? Stabilization fund? No. Oh, okay. Okay, that's fine. Good. I was just going to point out, I heard we need every dollar in there, so anyway. Um, the second thing, does this comply with the new ordinance? Because it's my understanding this is a new organization, so don't we have to waive? They, they are under uh, the threshold, uh, the $50 threshold. And you comply I, with I the ordinance? The exact same reaction last. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Commissioner Holt. Before the vote was taken, I think I made it pretty public that I struggled with the fact that this is coming outside of the process. It's nothing against it organization at all and so for that reason I haven't been able to arrive at being able to just see this as an exception to our rule process if this was coming through us through the 2019 budget but allowing this organization to jump ahead in line I just think sets a bad precedent and so I will not be supporting it for that reason. Thank you Commissioner Hall. Any other public input or commissioner comments? Mr. Clerk would you please uh, take a roll call vote for Commissioner Bill 2018-20. This is a roll call vote on Commissioner Bill 2018-20. Commissioner Brace? Yes. Commissioner Brown? No. Commissioner Doherty? Yes. Commissioner Gramis? Yes. Commissioner Nostein? Yes. Commissioner Hartzell? Yes. Commissioner Holt? No. And Commissioner Zanelli? Yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I've recorded six votes in favor and two votes opposed. Thank you. Bill passes uh, on that vote total. So we'll move along to Bill 2018-21. Mr. Clerk, will you introduce the final item, please? Commissioner Bill 2018-21, approving the Memorandum of Understanding between the County of Lehigh and SEIU Healthcare Pennsylvania, and transferring funds to implement the same, sponsored by Commissioner Bull. Thank you, Madam Solicitor. The purpose of this ordinance is to approve a Memorandum of Understanding between the County of Lehigh and SEIU Healthcare Pennsylvania. Um, in addition to transferring funds to implement it. The memorandum is attached as Exhibit A, and ordinance approval is required pursuant to 310A11 of the Lehigh County Home Rule Charter. Thank you, sponsor's comments. Sponsor comments, Commissioner Holt. This is the result of a lengthy deliberation process and doing negotiations with this particular group, and, um, and the result was that we were able to come to consensus around the proposal that's before us here, and I would defer to the other members of the negotiation team if they want to add anything to that. But it was, I thought, a very good conversation that was had. Um, I think there was give and take on both sides and the result of what you see before you today, and it comes with the recommendation of the committee. Thank you, Commissioner Holt. Any other commissioner comments? Made no comments the last time. <laughs> good agreement. Good agreement. Any public input? Joe Lillard, South Allentown. Well, I guess Sam left. Um, was planning to bring this topic up at some point anyway, and it's appropriate on this. Uh, to the points he was talking about, um, these union officials do, doing all the intimidation and harassment, are, are they county employees as well? Uh, I believe you must have an anti-intimidation, anti-harassment policy. I, I remember Commissioner Zanelli expanded it a little bit to cover more people 
Why isn't that not being applied? They should be terminated. I, I, I agree. I think that has to be answered by our administration. Okay. Because again, if you tolerate intimidation and harassment in one area, policy is a joke. So I think it could open up the county to lawsuits, possibly, in the very near future. Uh, secondly, with the Janus decision, I think we have to reassess the whole relationship with the unions. Um, are, are you still collecting dues and fees, and or are you totally out of that now? So the union has to go to their workers to collect it, correct? Is the way any private organization operates, because they're a private corporation. Commissioner Dockery? Yes, uh, the, when the Janus decision was passed, we actually had a negotiating meeting out at Cedarbrook uh, that particular day. And uh, this was uh, discussed uh, thoroughly with Judy Johnston, the uh, Human Resources Director. And uh, I even made uh, comments at the following commissioner's meeting that uh, I hope that this didn't result in any discrimination. But we have heard from people in uh, children and youth, I, I and also heard so. from Sam tonight, that uh, there there has been discrimination. So this is up to uh, the individuals who feel that they're discriminated against to bring it through official channels. Okay, good. I'll reach out to those people who reached out to me as well. And uh, um, the other question in terms of the fair share. We stopped collecting that. Okay, good news. Because again, they're a private corporation. So uh, the government should be in the business of collecting uh, a private corporation's funds. So it just makes no sense. Or can we arrange it for like the NRA or some group like that? <laughs> That'd be wonderful, right? No, it's not the function of government to get involved in politics like that. So um, anyway, good. Uh, another thing, because again, going forward, I think future contracts, you know, we don't want to hold this up. And this isn't against the workers at all. And I know a lot of union employees and they're good people. Even in the government, they do good work. They take their jobs seriously. They're very professional. They're diligent, et cetera. It's the leadership that most people have the issues with, obviously. Uh, but I think in each contract, it should require a recertification of the union. What if the majority don't want to be in the union anymore? They should have the option to have that vote. They can decertify the, the very similar process as it takes to certify a union. But why is it etched in stone forever, for eternity? That goes against all good concepts of, of rational individual choice. So just, just some ideas, but um, the Janus thing and ruling has changed uh, a lot of these, quite, uh, brought up a lot of these relationship questions. So I think we, we need to start looking into this further in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Snelly. There was nothing I had to say that Percy did not already say. Excuse me, Commissioner Stark did not already say. Thank you. Any other Commissioner comments or public input? <laughs> All those in favor of approving Commissioner Bill 2018 21, please say aye. 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 Bill passes. Moving on to new business. Mr. Clerk, would you introduce the first motion distributed regarding the CCAP expenses? I move that the necessary expenses are approved for Commissioner Dockery to attend the 2018 County Commissioners Association of Pennsylvania Annual Conference to be held in Gettysburg, PA from August 5 to 8. Thank you. Is there a motion made? So moved. Motion by Commissioner Graves. Second okay. by Commissioner Gramis. Any commissioner comments on the motion? Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Any public input? All those in favor of approving the motion, please say aye. 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 The motion passes. So we'll move on to the resolution. Mr. Clerk, would you introduce the first resolution? Uh, we have a second motion, uh, Commissioner. Correct. Um, yeah. This is a motion to support additional financial statement analysis by the Lehigh County Fiscal Office as discussed in tonight's Finance Committee meeting. I'll make that motion. We have a motion Second. by Commissioner Hall and a second by Commissioner Dougherty. Any other commissioner comments on our second motion this evening? Commissioner Briggs. We, we discussed this in committee. Um, I just wanted to uh, I didn't make, get to make these comments during the finance committee. Thank you for bringing this matter up. Um, during our, our last full board meeting, we, we engaged in a, a, a pretty high level view of the financial statements of the authors report. Uh, 
it very easy during that high level of the presentation to miss out on what you grasped and it helped us to, to identify as important. So thank you. Thank you. I would just like to say for the benefit of me meeting the public that's here that this was um, a cooperation between the administration and ourselves and that was a wonderful thing to see and we really appreciate the administration working with us to make this happen and look forward to the information being provided should this motion pass. Thank you. Any public input for the motion? All those in favor of approving the motion, please say aye. 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 Motion passes. Now moving on to the resolutions. Resolution 2018-42. Mr. Clerk, would you introduce that resolution? Resolution 2018-42, approving professional services agreements with Grace Chiha Vangelo, Haddon McGroves, Carla A. Gutierrez, Eileen Haig, Sandra Sinclair, Javier Macias, and David Navarre for interpretation slash translation services. Uh, the, sponsors by, the sponsors are Commissioners Osborne, Hartzell, and Zanelli. There was a conversation in committee that uh, if the board does approve this resolution that the county executive would refrain signing the contract until some matters could be cleared up with court administration. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Madam Solicitor. The purpose of this resolution is to approve a professional services agreement with the aforementioned individuals to provide interpretation and translation services for the courts. The proposed agreements are attached to Exhibit A, and resolution approval is required for contracts under Section 801.1D of the Administrative Code. Thank you. Sponsor comments. Commissioner Osborne is not here, so I'm going to ask Commissioners Hartzler and Snelly if they'd like to add anything. Well, just a vital service, obviously, for anyone uh, involved in the court system. You have to be able to understand what's going on. We ran into one minor glitch over one tiny fee in one of the contracts that should be resolved and can be resolved uh, before that final contract is signed. Otherwise, it's pretty pretty standard fare. Thank you, Commissioner Arsenal. Commissioner Snelly, would you like to add anything? I would just like to let the public know that wasn't here at the committee meeting that I'm very proud to report every single one of these translators is local. And for those of you that know anyone that requires translation services, just have them to go back and be for cultural deviations in the language and for people's comfort. So I'm very happy that we have all the local translators in this conference. Thank you, Commissioner Any other commissioner comments? Any public input? Hearing none, all those in favor of the vote. Oh, 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 Okay, next time. <laughs> uh, Naomi Winch, MA of Borough. I just want to emphasize that language access is crucial, not only in Lehigh County, but all over the United States. Um, by 2056, we know that so many more people uh, from different ethnicities will be coming, will be here, will be the majority of our, of our, with our, of our um, citizens in the United States. And so we want to make sure that we're being proactive about this and that um, everybody has the right to understanding what's going on in front of them. It's only everyone's constitutional right, and it's just the, the humane thing to do. Thank you. Thank you, Naomi. No, I'm sorry I didn't see you back there. No worries. <laughs> Any other public input? All those in favor of resolution 2018-42, please say aye. 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 The resolution passes. Mr. Clerk, would you introduce the next resolution? Resolution 2018-43, Amending the rules of the Board of Commissioners regarding citizens' input on items postponed, deferred, tabled, or withdrawn, sponsored by Commissioners Anelli and Grantis. Thank you, Madam Solicitor. The purpose of this resolution is to amend the rules of the Board of Commissioners regarding citizens' input, um, specifically regarding Rule 4.17, which is made pursuant to Section 303 of the Lake County Home Rule Charter that relates to the adoption of four rules. Thank you. Sponsor comments, Commissioners Anelli and Grantis. Um, I will restate what I did earlier at committee. As it stands right now, if we have an item that is on the agenda and someone comes down and plans to speak on it, and perhaps they weren't here for state committee or whatever other reason, they're not aware that the item is no longer on the agenda, they then miss their window of a guarantee and a right to be able to speak about said item because they are unaware that that item is no longer on the agenda. This would change the rules to ensure that, whereas it stands now, if they would like to speak to that item that was withdrawn or postponed, et cetera, et cetera, that permission to speak would such be a permission and a courtesy that would be granted uh, at the behest of the chair of our board. 
and not guaranteed as a right for the citizen to speak. 